إنما يؤخرهم ليوم تشخص فيه الأبصار مهطعين مقنعي رؤوسهم لا يرتد إليهم طرفهم وأفئدتهم هواء وأنذر الناس يوم يأتيهم العذاب فيقول الذين ظلموا ربنا أخرنا إلى أجل إلى أجل قريب نجب دعوتك ونتبع الرسل أولم تكونوا أقسمتم من قبل ما لكم من زوال وسكنتم في مساكن الذين ظلموا أنفسهم وتبين لكم كيف فعلنا بهم وضربنا لكم الأمثال May Allah reward the brother Just to recite the, to translate the ayahs Sorry. So, after Do not think, O Prophet of Allah, that Allah is unaware of what the wrongdoers do. He only delays them until a day when their eyes will stare in horror, rushing forth, heads raised, never blinking, hearts void. And warn the people of the day when the punishment will overtake the wicked among them, and the wrongdoers will cry, O Lord, delay us for a little while. We will respond to your call and follow the messengers. It will be said, did you not swear before that you would never be removed to the next life? You passed by the ruins of those destroyed peoples who had wronged themselves. It was made clear to you how we dealt with them, and we gave you many examples. We're joined today by the knowledgeable and the people that study and work their, their li- work in their lives trying to help us get through these sort of things. We have Estad Abu Ibrahim, uh, Abu Khalil, sorry, Ibrahim, Allah reward you, and Yasir Mursi, psychologist, and inshallah they're going to be helping us get through the, the events and the cat- catastrophes that we have all been suffering, especially a lot lately. Alhamdulillah, you know, I, I, think, um, I think in a nutshell, I think what has been happening has really, really brought us as an ummah together. I have seen a huge change within, within just our youth alone. And I pray this continues and I pray this is a changing and a stepping stone for us to get closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. Brother Mursi. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As you can tell, you know, the images and the videos that we are constantly seeing through social media, uh, especially social media, you can imagine you can imagine the toll they're taking on our hearts. What are some ways we can deal with this hmm. from a psychological point of view? Subhanallah. Um, <clears throat> Bismillah. Wa for the invitation. It is an incredibly difficult question to ask because of many different ways. Um, one way or the other, we will uh, be impacted. For some of us, um, if we look away or choose not to look, we may feel guilt, may feel helpless, may feel like we're not doing enough, may feel like we have to bear witness to the violence and um, see and what's happening to uh, those in Gaza. Um, but if we do over expose ourselves to some of the very violent images, it's never easy to see um, the helpless being uh, bombed, killed, screaming. There have been images of mothers wailing, children, of course, losing their limbs. So to answer your question, um, there is no clear or right answer, unfortunately. One has to assess their own, I guess, 
capacity to do so. I would believe uh, maybe take a break here and there, um, maybe um, rely on various different du'as and uh, appeals to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get you through various different moments. But I'm going to make a different appeal as well. And I'm not quite sure. Sorry, would you be able to just speak up a little bit? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm not quite sure if this is more about therapy or more about politics. And sometimes the two are in tension, sometimes the two overlap. I do think it's our obligation to be able to bear witness, to see, to watch, to be able to teach our next generation, to be able to manage and channel this pain into a direction where we uh, stand up for one another and create a, a politics, yeah. um, a space, a community that understands and is aware of what we're going through. Now, there will be a price to pay for that psychologically, um, but um, that price can be managed more than the price of looking away. And even, even sometimes, you know, I, I will speak from, uh, I'm from the West, and even one of the brothers in our, lo our local mosque, uh, he actually lost his job because of him sharing and trying to, trying to raise awareness. So this, mm -hmm. do you reckon this is, this is one of the aspects of paying the price? Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, we can maybe get into the very different layers and atmospheres of the way Islamophobia works, at what point Muslims are allowed to talk, at what points they're not, at what points they're allowed to raise consciousness, and at what points they're expected to be silent. Um, but I, don't, I would never make a direct call or a collective call to say, uh, do something that will be detrimental to your health or livelihood. This is yeah. something you have to assess, yeah? Some of us are in a better place to do it, some of us aren't. But I also think it's important that we archive, record, and recognize what happens to these brothers and sisters yeah. that do speak out and do lose their jobs so that we can find a, either a legal, political, communal defense of this because the easiest thing that the other side wants is our silence. Yeah, SubhanAllah, it's very true. So what would you say to some people who are unfortunately attacking their brothers and sisters who aren't raising awareness, if that makes sense? I, I, yeah. Not, not much. I, wouldn't say. I, don't, I don't agree. Mm. Um, everyone has different capacity. I, unless you're in the way, unless you're part of the... It's effectively calling to normalize Zionism. Mm. I don't think you should be called out. It's very hard for us. There's a concept that we have called lateral violence. Mm. Uh, a lateral violence means, say there's a violence from the oppressor. It drops on us and it spreads out. Mm. Yeah, so it comes vertically, but it spreads out horizontally. We start turning on one another. We start asking, it's like almost pointing the fingers. It takes a lot of resilience, a lot of awareness, a lot of emotional intelligence, a lot of, uh, I guess, necessity to do therapy within ourselves to ensure that we don't take that violence and spread it out to one another. So I generally have a no attack Muslim rule, uh, not the ruler, <laughs> no attack Muslim rule uh, in this moment unless they are openly and advocating for um, Zionism or, or so if you can't though if you're silent khair. Sheikh Ibrahim what's your opinion from a Shirai point of view on this طيب بسم الله الحمد لله ثم الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا as always we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we seek his blessings his assistance in all our affairs uh, relating to the dunya and the akhirah and then we send our peace and salutations upon his noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, firstly, I want to thank the brothers for the invitation, for giving me this opportunity to, pre to present myself. Although there are mashayikh who are more knowledgeable in this field um, and more better speaking than me. So I want to thank the brothers for this and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala add that to the scale of good deeds. <clears throat> so regarding the situation in, um, in Palestine, uh, whether it's Palestine, whether it's uh, brothers and sisters in, in China, the Uyghurs, whether it's uh, brothers and sisters in Burma, all across the globe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the believers in al mu'minuna ikhwa aslihu bayna akhwaikum that verily the believers are nothing but brothers wal mu'minuna wal mu'minatu awliya'u ba'dhum wal mu'minuna wal mu'minatu ba'dhum awliya'u ba'd that the believing uh, men and the believing women are protectors of each other they are allies of each other right and in the sunnah the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions al muslim akhu al muslim the muslim is a brother of another Muslim, right? Uh, he does not 
um, he does not wrong, he does not do any wrong with him, or any wrong to him. He does not cheat him, and he does not give him up. لا يسلمه. Some of the scholars of the Hadith they translate this as that they do not leave him in the open, leave him to be uh, oppressed, right? Whilst they can help him, and there are many ways, uh, Sharan, that we can help our brothers and sisters uh, in, in Palestine, namely in Gaza. Uh, number one is that we feel concern for them. We feel for them. We feel concern for them. Dua'una lahum wa qulubuna lahum, right? We, our hearts are for them and we make our du'as for them constantly. And this is number one. Because if you look at the, the stories of, of the Qur'an, people when they were oppressed, the story of Musa alayhi salam when he faced Fir'aun. And Fir'aun, Fir'aun, he has done and committed worse things than what the, right now what the Zionist entity is doing with the Palestinians, right? He slaughtered all, all the children, all the male children. All the boys, all the young boys, all right? And he left, and plus he enslaved the women as well. And Musa alayhi salam, he said to his people, Ya qawm, ista'inu billah, ista'inu, ista'un, ista'inu billah. Uh, seek help in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through prayer and patience. That is, uh, that is the first thing that we need to do as Muslims. We need to pray up for qiyam, we need to stand up for qiyam al layl and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, constantly invoke and call to him. And we need to be patient as well, because this is not going to happen over time. Um, all the other things come secondary, right? All the protests, all the awareness, all the whatever you want to do, boycott, all this thing comes secondary. But primary is that we stand up and do, do dua al qunut and, um, and correct ourselves as well, right? So part of the situation is because of ourselves, our inner selves. ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that fitna and trial and tribulation has, has spread vastly in the, in the earth simply because of what we earned ourselves, right? Just so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can return us. And um, we can also study our religion as well, namely study the importance of Palestine, the importance of Masjid al-Aqsa, the importance of these surrounding places. Subhanallah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he took his slave Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Mecca to Masjid al-Aqsa and that is where he ascended him to the heavens. We know that uh, Palestine holds a great deal of uh, importance in the Muslim religion. It is the Ard al mahshar It is where the people will be gathered on the Day of Judgment. It is where the Antichrist will be killed. It is where Isa alayhi salam will be, will, be, will be descending. It is where many of the Anbiya have passed through. Nabiullah Ibrahim alayhi salam, it is said that he made hijrah to Palestine. Nabiullah um, um, uh, Nuh, Nuh alayhi salam, after the flood, he was told to go to Palestine as well. Nabiullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he prayed and led all the other prophets in Palestine as well. Nabiullah Dawood alayhi salam, uh, and his son, Sulaiman alayhi salam, ruled over the world in Palestine as well. So Palestine holds a great deal of importance for the Muslims, and this should be, this should be the core value, and it is an individual obligation for all Muslims to feel for them, and to do whatever is in their means to support them. Allah alam. Sheikh, uh, as young Muslims here, what is the most important thing we should do right now, as a Muslim right now? What is our first priority? What is the most important thing? Whether, whether it's for ourselves or for the sake of uh, the Palestinians and what they're going through. No. Uh, there's a number of things that we can do, right? As I've said before, making dua for them, feeling for them. Um, that is number one. And also having emotions for them as well. مَنْ لَمْ يَهْتَمَّ بِأَمْرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَلَيْسَ مِنْهُمْ Prophet says that whoever does not concern for the affairs of the Muslims, he's not of them. So that's, that is an individual obligation. طيب. We can also go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek repentance, right? We should correct ourselves, our inner selves first. Um, by, by, um, by making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sincere tawbah, all right? Not just by the, things that we, by the things that we earn, but also by the things that we're doing. Correcting ourselves, our households, our communities, and then eventually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will correct the ummah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yughayru. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not change the state of people until they change that which is themselves. So after making dua, we change that which is, them, that, that which is within ourselves, become better Muslims. And then what we can do is study the religion. That's very important. Study the seerah of the Prophet Study the Arabic language. Study the Quran. All right? 
study how to deal with atrocities like this and how, the pro and how previous prophets and companions and those that came before us have dealt with this. Um. Yes, sir. I just had a very quick question for you. So, subhanAllah, a, a lot of your, the people that you see, whether it's you know, at the school where you work or, or other, other clients, they obviously Muslim. Have you had people come to you and just tell you that and kind of explain to you how they've been impacted by the situation? Just so everyone here kind of gets an idea that they're not alone in how this is impacting them. Sure, I, um, I can begin to give you a description of what's happened yep. since the first week of October. So I have two jobs, one of which is at AIA, uh, where yep. I work as a school counsellor, and I still work at university. And both spaces have been impacted. But let's focus on the school because it's an Islamic school. Um, and so yes, the answer is direct, contact with we tend to call clients quote unquote um, I have seen uh, the level of impact this has but also more importantly the entire atmosphere of the school staff room staff members yourself the atmosphere changes you people come to work tired people have been up all night people are worried about how to articulate how to express how to resist yeah um, then there's there's a kind of concern and worry about the kids. The kids will come to me and they will either have a kind of direct trauma or a visceral trauma through their parents. So their mum and dad are up all night crying. Yeah. Um, some, we've had some students who are from Gaza, who are from Palestine, um, who have lost family members. In our school without, I don't know if they want me to tell the details, I'll, I'll keep it fairly generic. You know, we have staff members, whether it's the canteen lady or somebody else, a lot of people from Palestine. Our own vice principals from Palestine. So the entire atmosphere is shaped by this. And this stressor, this rapture, um, almost all the things that the Sheikh said, we do ultimately, instinctively, um, as Muslims, we, we flock to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, but then there is something else, Bilal, there's an anger, there's a resentment, there's a need to talk back, speak back. And sometimes in a therapeutic relationship, the way we're trained, is my job effectively is to listen and try to um, manage people's emotions, right? Or help them manage, to put it better. But anger is a, a can be, without glorifying it, a noble compass that tells you what's right and wrong. We're angry for a reason. So there are multiplicities of emotions, contests, people, events, and because it's now 40 plus days, it has not given us a break. So I can say that the atmosphere is heavy, incredibly heavy, a lot more tears, but a lot more helplessness, and the kind of low burning resentment and anger that we can't stop this from happening. Subhanallah, subhanAllah. Uh, we do want to open up the floor as well to questions from you guys. So if anyone has a question, please raise your hand. For, for anyone. Yep. Wa well, alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. Within our community, there's at times a stigma with the psychological aspects of life. Would you mind explaining what some of the differences are between emotional support or focus on emotional health and spiritual health slash spiritual health? So the question, just for anyone who didn't hear, was... There's a bit of a stigma in our community uh, about psychological help. Psychological help. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. So, did you ask the difference between emotional and the psychological help? Uh, emotional and spiritual. Uh, the emotional and spiritual help. Um, so, I'm going to answer for me and answer for more the industry that I work for. For me, there's the spiritual health is emotional health. Spiritual health does inevitably cover uh, all of the various different experiences that we go through. Now, the discipline that I have learned and the one that I practice, it is Western, secular, and grounded in a particular understanding of how to do therapy. Whether that's right or wrong, that's no bigger debate that we can have it another day, inshallah. Um, now, with respect to the stigma, some of that stigma is legitimate. Some of it, um, I think, is a result of the fact that um, we possibly, Allahu Alam, as a community, have 
may be not understood, the various different stresses that modern secular life brings on us, sometimes it's so incredibly inane, weird. You wake up every day, you go to work every day, it's around and around in the cycle, and it doesn't seem to have a purpose, and that purpose maybe not be attached. Maybe for us, that we try to restitch that attachment for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but there's something, it grinds you down. And as a consequence of that, there are various different ways the discipline has tried to understand anxiety, which is a kind of uh, a fear of what's to come, depression, sadness, but then there are various other disorders. The stigma in the community is partly reasonable and partly unreason unreasonable. It would have to unpack it. But I do say this, if you are struggling, um, what the psych psychology does provide is a because I've been doing it for a while, significant amount of ways to test, a particular language to measure where about the problem is, to deliberate between thought, thinking, and behavior. And if we can integrate that into that spiritual language that we've inherited as Muslim, there may be some khair and benefit. But spiritual health for me is the ultimate, what we call protective factor. Um, that I want to very quickly say this. However, we as Muslims have particular problems, unique to our community. Problems that are political in nature, problems about being a minority in this country, problems that our language has, is not the, the dominant language, problems that are the, the family unit that we've inherited is stressed in various different ways, problems that our curriculum at school don't often reflect our aspirations, and problems because of all that we've inherited politically. And there's a big gap. Because the problems that we've inherited, sometimes the industry doesn't have the language to explain. So um, I will, I can very quickly without, after the Christchurch shootings, I was working at university and I was helping uh, young Muslims on campus. The university asked me to go see a, a, a psychologist. I, was, <laughs> I went, you know, I sat down. Um, and they were like, okay, tell me what's wrong didn't know where to begin. I really didn't. It wasn't just Christchurch. It was 20 years. And I began to explain as much as I possibly up, can. Yeah. yeah. Like, basically, I have to give an entire context to my life as a Muslim that is, you know, she was a white woman who didn't quite click, see it, get. It's a lot of emotional labor to do to somebody. You have to do a lot of translating. Well, for at the end of it, when I said it all, there was a pause. She looked at me and she said, politics seems important to you. <laughs> and th for me, that was uh, a telling moment. It's not that politics means important, but I cannot escape it. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had a choice to escape it. Yeah. I didn't wake up and want to see what's happening to Palestine. It is what it is, and I've had to navigate and deal with it. So there is a stigma because there's a, sometimes a schism between the listener and the speaker, but inshallah, that can be mended with the next generation of mental health workers that come from our community. I mean, um, Sheikh Ibrahim, you want to add to the spiritual <coughs> aspect of it? Um, so, in terms of the spiritual aspects, um, we, we can always go back to the Quran and the Sunnah, yeah. right? And we know for sure what the Palestinians are experiencing, or what they've experienced in the last 40 odd days, even more, the last 70 years or so, none of us can imagine, right? And if somebody says that I can imagine it, then clearly they're, they're lying, right? So, and one thing that gives us, yani, one thing that, if it wasn't for the Quran, right, we would have lost our sanity, we would have lost our minds, right? So, the Quran gives us the remedy. The Quran is the treatment. And if you read through the verses, what our brother Zubair was reading before, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not heedless, and not carelessness, and not forgetful of what the wrongdoers do. Those that oppress, those that commit atrocities, those that... Um, those that are evil, right? What they do, إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِرُهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخُصُ فِي الْأَبْصَارِ The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delays them uh, for a day, whether it is a day in this life or the afterlife, in which the eyes will stay in horror. So that's one thing that we can do. Always look back to the Quran and the Sunnah. Always find comfort and ease, in ease there. Um, and always يعني, try and... It's hard uh, avoiding um, you know, the news and social media and seeing people, young Muslims, children, babies being, being bombed and being, and, and being killed in different ways. If you can try and at least uh, avoid it, 
will be good. Yani if you try and, try and avoid it and just read the Quran and read the seer of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, correct your inner self, right? Correct your inner self. And also don't transgress your emotions. It's very important. All right? It's good to have emotions. Emotions is a part of Iman. But transgressing it to a point where you question Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and His Qadr and His decree, where you say, why is Allah doing this if Allah is so merciful? And you know, we see young youth, young Muslims say this, SubhanAllah. And this is something that's you know, detrimental for your Iman yourself. Right? You don't want to question your own Iman. So you want sabr, right? And this is, I mean, this is what the messengers and, and the companions all went through. And they went through worse, worse things, right? Prophets were killed, right? You're talking about, subhanAllah, I mean, uh, babies being killed. These people, these Zionists and, 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 their, and their forefathers, they've killed prophets. Nabiullah Zakriya salam, was killed. They've excelled prophets as well. They tried to kill prophets. They, they did more things, more worse things, right? But the prophets I mean, were very endured. They were very patient. And they always... Sought help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is what we should do. Mm. Nah, that's it. Turn it back and fleeing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallah feek. Yes sir, Barakallah feek. We're going to bring uh, Sheikh Bahdun up to the stage. Jazakallah khair for joining us. May Allah reward you. May Allah reward you. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu yeah. alaikum. Welcome back to part two, inshallah, of, of this podcast, of this live panel. And Sheikh Baton from PGCC, all the way from uh, further than Dandenong, yeah? Dufton. Pretty much. Dufton, yeah, 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 subhanallah. subhanallah. A lot of people here don't know where Dufton is. So we just say Dandenong, you know, general area. That's subhanallah. Fine, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Sheikh, um, please, if you could just expand a little bit on, on what we were speaking on before the break. Uh, just on the spiritual aspect of, of dealing with what's going on in Palestine at the moment. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa ashabi wa anwala. Firstly, I'd like to say jazakallah khairan and thank you for inviting me to this uh, beautiful gathering where you can probably estimate majority are young men and assume sisters there. The beautiful faces, alhamdulillah. It's a uh, Amazing to be in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a Saturday night um, where we can uh, speak about relevant matters and topics uh, connected to our, you know, our existence and our iman. What we are experiencing now in this day and age and what we are seeing, uh, it's unprecedented. It's the first time ever we, we are witnessing as a Muslim ummah a genocide in front of our eyes which has been proliferated because of uh, social media it's it's spread uh, we are watching this and it's it is quite sad when we see the graphic content but at the same time when our iman is pushed the true colors come out right? there's been a lot of positives that we can take out from this current situation and one of them if I could mention is that the Muslim Ummah is uh, waking up and uh, you know unifying and uniting in different ways, alhamdulillah. And as I just mentioned, I feel like that it is instilling in us this type of, um, these good emotions and good feelings, you know, and returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not easy to witness, it's, it's, uh, it's very uh, difficult to see, but at the same time, when the Muslim ummah is pushed right, in France, they, they, you know, insult the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then you see how the Muslims respond. In Germany, in London, they said they don't want people to protest in the streets and more come out. 
the more they push, you know, the ummah, the more you see they stand up. You know, so our iman instills in us optimism. Uh, and that's an important message for one and all that what we are seeing now, the prophets, alayhi salam, have experienced also uh, something similar or even more difficult. The Quran speaks about it and there are numerous lessons in the Quran. One verse, for example, that comes to mind, Am hasibatum an tadkhulu janna wa lamma ya'tikum mathalu alladheena khalaw min qablikum massatumul ba'sa wa ad-darra wa zulzilu hatta yaqul ar-rasul wa alladheena amanu ma'a mata nasrullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Sahaba, the companions, at a time in Mecca, or rather, the verses in Surah Baqarah, so it was revealed in Medina, but telling the Sahaba, they went through persecution in Mecca, they went through oppression, they went through tragedies, difficulties, no rights, no, all of this they went through, and Allah Azza wa Jal is telling them, do you think you will enter Jannah freely? Do you think it will be a smooth path to enter Jannah? Hasibtum an tadkhul Jannah? And you haven't yet experienced, you haven't gone through the difficulties that came on the previous nations. They went through poverty, they went through oppression, injustices, all of that to such an extent that the Prophet and the believers with him said, when is the help of Allah going to come? And this is a question that, that arises in the minds of a lot of us. When is the help of Allah going to come? And the response is, Ala inna nasrallahi qareeb. The help of Allah is near. And this is uh, this part of the ayah instills optimism in us. So, one thing we always uh, keep in mind when we look in the seerah, we look in the life of the Prophet sallallahu <laughs> For example, one of the most difficult times in his life was a taif, when he went and presented himself to Banu Thaqif, uh, a prominent tribe, and. Instead of respecting him and honoring him, in fact, they humiliated him and threw stones at him until blood came out of his blessed body. And angels came and offered to crush these people. But yet yeah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the manifestation of mercy, the Nabiyu Rahma, you know, what was his words? He said that, you know, لَعَلَّ اللَّهَ أَن يُخْرِجَ مِنْ أَصْلَابِ هَؤُلَا مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ you know, he's, he was thinking, he was hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would take out people from that same oppressive nation that would end up worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we see always he's, uh, he's, through his life, you know, that optimism that there's always, uh, there's always uh, light at the end of the tunnel. So Sheikh, on the, on the back of that, what would you say regarding the, we know the situation that happened recently. Um, with the with the burger burger place that was burnt down right. and the backlash that happened from that, um, obviously there weren't very great scenes. Um, the people that kind of felt that they needed to take the justice into their own hands. What what what's the view? What viewpoint should we have when something like that happens? Because of course he evoked a lot of anger in all of us. Mm. All right. All right. Um, what I'll say first is when we look at our teachings, um, we look at the Quran. The two verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us and tells us to be people of justice. Ya ayyuhaladina amanu kunu kawamina bil kisti shuhada alilla. This is in Surah Al Nisa and uh, in Surah Al Ma'idah, quite similar. Kunu kawamina lillahi shuhada bil kist. So um, the, the words have been reversed. And then when you study and you dissect these two verses, you find in Surah An-Nisa, the first one mentions, كُنُوا قَوَّامِينَ بِالْقِسْتِ الشُّهَدَاءَ لِلَّهِ وَلَوْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ الْوَالِدَيْنِ أَوْ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Be just, even if you have to be just against yourself, your parents and your relatives. And in the second verse, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, we are told, كُنُوا قَوَّامِينَ لِلَّهِ الشُّهَدَاءَ بِالْقِسْتِ وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ الشَّنَآنُ Rather, So the translation is that do not allow the enmity or hatred of a group of people to allow you to transgress the limits. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Do not allow people's actions to make you 
experience an emotional outburst and then you cross the limits. Rather, i'dilu, you be just. And that is the closest to consciousness, the taqwa. So keeping that in mind, as Muslims, and another important point is that we, to a certain level, to a certain extent, do represent Islam here in Melbourne. And that's important for all of us to keep in mind. We are representing Islam. We are ambassadors of Islam. We are the vicegerents of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the khulafa on the earth, right? So uh, we are the ambassadors of the Quran. We are the, in, sorry, the inheritors of the Quran, the heirs. We have taken in the Quran. This is our constitution, our book. So we have this responsibility of calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Nahl, verse 125, very important verse Allah azza wa jal tells us, ادعوا إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن. That call to the path of Allah, invite to Allah's path with wisdom and with موعظة, with a strong reminder right, that reaches and penetrates into the heart and debate them in the best manner, أحسن, not just good, in the most excellent way. Right? And in fact, uh, Ibn Qayyim رحمه الله has mentioned there's three levels in this verse. The first is that uh, you call people to Allah with wisdom. He states that there are some people that are intelligent and they are not stubborn and they are not heedless. They are awake, vigilant, alert. They understand where they are. These type of individuals, it's quite simple. You call them to Allah with wisdom. Then the second is the type of person who is heedless, who is indulging in the worldly life and doesn't want to wake up to the reality. This type of person needs a strong reminder that will penetrate to the heart. I'm still coming back to the, to yeah. the question, yeah? <laughs> but I just want to build up. So this, this type of person needs a different type of message, a message that will penetrate to the heart, mawidha, not just a normal talk, because uh, it's heedless. Yeah? The third person is stubborn, arrogant, you know, filled with pride. This individual, now you need to debate them. And then when we debate, so now representing each level, we're representing Islam. Whether it's through wisdom, whether it's a strong reminder, or whether it's debating. When we debate, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say, bi hasan, He said, ahsan, the mm. best possible way. You know, searching for the truth, using the etiquettes of Islam, and so on and so forth. So, uh, we have this responsibility of calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if people transgress, right? Now, we don't take things in our own hands where we also transgress. We do have the system of of justice in Islam where, you know, life for a life and if somebody does something to you, you can do the exact the same. If somebody verbally abuses you, you can say the same back. But the Quran mentions what is sublime character and conduct. You know, You know, if you can get over that and you can pardon and then you can also, um, you know, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake, you can deal with your, you can hold yourself, and that is min azmin umur. That is from the the matters that are of, of resolution. So, no matter what happens, I think we always have to stay to our teachings and not cross the line. We should not respond in a manner that will be detrimental to Islam and the image of Islam here in Melbourne. So, would definitely say we have to hold ourselves to account and not do anything wrong, not uh, break any laws. Uh, not commit any crimes, <coughs> things of this nature, yes. And um, uh, at the same time, uh, continue to do what we are supposed to do. Inshallah, hopefully that answers the yeah, question. Yeah, inshallah, inshallah. Mm. Uh, the, yeah. the, the women, inshallah, are asking a lot of good questions. Yeah, I was going to go All to right. the questions. Yeah. We'll take <laughs> some of them, inshallah. Shall mm. we go to Sheikh Ibrahim with, with the first one, inshallah? Yeah. Um, so, Sheikh, this is, <laughs> this is a, it's a doozy, as they say. Okay. <laughs> so, they say... Um, are women allowed to attend the protests and shout out phrases that might draw attention to herself and some people are using it as a coping mechanism? So this is, the, this is their release. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sheikh, you're already married, yeah? Yeah, no, I'm married, alhamdulillah. Um, regarding, regarding protests, right, some, some of the modern day scholars have said protest is not allowed. Right? And some have backtracked and said protest is allowed, it brings awareness, provided that the Sharia guidelines are met. Right? Um, is that you, difficult to do though in a country like Australia? It would be very difficult, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, how are you going to separate you know, men and women? Uh, you got to try and do your amas bas, right? not, try, and miss, not pray, try and not miss prayers as well. Right? Mm -hmm. Duhur and Asr. 
these people protesting it's morning until afternoon, right? Um, and also, yeah, keeping the guidelines straight. Yeah, that's, that's all I can say at the moment. Yeah, do you, do you want to touch on to that? Sheikh Badan well? wants to add. Um, what, repeat the question, please. Uh, so the question is, our sisters are allowed to go to protests um, and yell out phrases that might draw attention to themselves, seeing as it's their only outlet. To cope. Well, yeah, it's, of course, we know it's not their only outlet, but this yeah. is what the question, the question is saying. Is, okay. yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's, three parts, there's three parts to the question. Uh, first is the, uh, the attending a protest, and that will be based on the ruling of protest. We understand that in this day and age now, uh, protests, march, marches, demonstrations, showing so solidarity is uh, one of the means uh, of activism, and um, uh, it could be effective um, to push so there are scholars who have qualified the um, uh, attendance to protests by mentioning that these means should not go contrary to Allah's teachings and displease Allah. Therefore, there shouldn't be any intermixing uh, of the opposite agenda and music and things of that nature, which I think are quite difficult to, to manage. Um, I think there still will be a little bit, but... Um, Maybe it might be tolerated. So based on that, if you say yes, okay, which I think Allah would say here in Melbourne and Australia, so attending, okay, she will attend. But then at the same time, um, the voice of a woman, uh, I don't think sh should be raised. Ulama clearly mentioned about that, that uh, regarding the voice of a woman, it is not classified as awrah. It is not classified as awrah, but... Uh, she shouldn't uh, generally speak in a seducive manner. Uh, so anything that could cause possible temptation or fitna needs to be avoided. So keeping that in mind, uh, it is not the only outlet for her to voice her, her um, concerns. Um, so I don't think, I don't, personally I would say I don't think she should raise her voice and, and uh, scream out the, the, what do you call it? The phrases. The phrases. Yeah, yeah. The phrases. She doesn't have to scream out. She can, mm. can say them in a low tone and keep it for the brothers to scream out. Mm. Yeah. Well, Khair well, inshallah. Khair mm. inshallah. Okay, you want to go to the next question? Yeah, we'll go to the next question. What is the viewpoint of boycotting in Islam? The viewpoint of boycotting, boycotting in Islam. Which is, which is what's, what's happening at the moment. With As in, is, it, is it encouraged? Is it disliked? Is it... Is it, is it um, compulsory even? Some people are, you know, subhanAllah, taking it as if it's compulsory. Uh, I'm not going to represent Islam and, and say the Islamic ruling, but I have heard scholars that say, especially this current situation now, that anything that can be detrimental to the economy of the enemies who are fighting against Islam is good. And boycotting, by, by boycotting products that we know will definitely support the enemy is good. They normally mention um, you can't sell, for example, you can't sell weapons to the Harbi. In the classical books of fiqh, the Harbi is a person who is at war with you, a person who you don't have a treaty with, you don't have a promise with. Right? These type of individuals, you can't support them. So now we know clearly that, the, that this uh, Zionist Israeli entity um, of killing our fellow Muslim uh, brothers and sisters, so that which supports them, definitely we should boycott. Definitely we should boycott, we shouldn't support them. Because how would you feel if you know, because some might say, oh, it's only an um, insignificant, trivial amount that's going to them, 5% or so. How would you feel if you know 1% of your income is going to killing your own father, your own child? How would you feel if you know that even 1% is going to, to the enemy who is preparing to kill your own father or your own son or your own daughter? So based on that, I believe definitely we should boycott, especially if we have halal alternatives. We're not stuck in a, in a, in a difficult situation. We have all these halal alternatives, then definitely, I don't know, I can't, I can't find it in myself, especially after watching this graphic content, yes. to still, I just feel like it's a weakness for my part that uh, I'm somewhat attached to this, to this drink, to Starbucks, for example, or McDonald's, or whatever it may be, I'm attached to it. So definitely I think we should boycott. Mm. Abu Ibrahim, Abu Khalil, regarding that, regarding that as well, Subhanallah, it's it's not uh, you know um, Islam versus non-Muslims. It's it's now truth against falsehood. 
It's now humanity against in, in humanity. We see you see non-Muslims, you know, advocating and and um, pushing for boycotts as well. So Alhamdulillah, yani that's that's and that's the least that we can do, right? If these products support McDonald's, for example, are giving free food to uh, the Zionist army on the front line, mm. right? HP, the, the laptop, the laptop brand, Starbucks, all of these, yani, and the least we can do is just avoid them as much as we can. I don't even like McDonald's. I don't even eat McDonald's Aslan. So, um, uh, even if you paid me, I wouldn't even eat it. <laughs> so, you know, um, Starbucks. Starbucks is not even all that. I probably had it a few times in my life. That's it. But you know, um, you know, there's other alternatives as well. There's other small businesses that we can support, uh, like our brothers here, Al Salam, Al Salam Cafe. Oh, what a beautiful you know, plug! It's a beautiful plug. <laughs> so that's you know that's the least we can do. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Allah Alam, knowledge best. Um, brothers, please. We want to open up the floor to the brothers as well for questions. I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions. Uh, Bilal, how are we doing on time? Where's Bilal? Is he gone? Yeah. Anyone know when the Iqama time is? Wa alaikum as 15 minutes. 15 minutes, inshallah. Right. How So the question is, how can we give da'wah through the things that we're seeing online, the atrocities? It, how, how can we use that to maybe guide people to Islam? Is that the question? Yeah. yeah. To non-Muslims who don't see this data, they don't see it on their phones, maybe it's not coming on their feeds. Uh, I think what's important for us as Muslims is that we do have our own little circle uh, of, uh, of Muslims that we communicate with and some of us work in different industries and, and, um, and we have our colleagues, non-Muslim colleagues so I think it's important to spread that awareness and, uh, and to change the narrative so if we have to educate ourselves with the history of, of Palestine then that's where we should you know, focus our energy in and speaking to them and, um, and knowing some of the arguments and the, how to debunk it and how to basically break it down. So we can show them the true narrative. We can show them because this is, this is uh, it's becoming more clear to, to, to the world, the double standards and the hypocrisy of Western media. That's right. Yeah. right? It's becoming more clear. Yeah. And if somebody is blind to this, after, what, after all of this, then it shows that they have their own you know, biases. So I think what's important for us as Muslims, that in a nice way, in a nice manner, we uh, spread the awareness uh, to our fellow non-Muslims and uh, and show them, you know, what is what is right. Mm. You know, demonstrate that. And if we have to learn from the professionals and the educated in our communities, um, and I think that's very important for us to take that step. You know, we can't we can't it, this can't be based on just emotions, right? We have to actually you know, take you know, calculated steps to spread the awareness in the right way. And I think it's important amongst the non-Muslims because it will be an important da'wah to bring them to Islam. A lot of people are waking up and coming to Islam because of the current situation. Last night we had a 16-year-old boy at our masjid embrace Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always bring, but it's just upon us be able to uh, you know, take the right steps. So I think uh, we should uh, spread the message uh, and utilize the current situation of what's happening, unfortunately, to our fellow brothers and sisters in Palestine to spread the message of Islam to the non-Muslims. Sheikh, would you like to add to that? No. Um, well, I like the Sheikh said, there's a lot of people embracing Islam because of this current situation. Uh, we've seen famous YouTubers, TikTokers, uh, announce Islam يعني, in abundance. Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna deena indallahi al-Islam. The true religion in the sight of Allah is al-Islam. Al-Islam will yu'la wa la yu'la alayh. Right? Islam will always prevail and will not be prevailed, right? So Islam is always going to be on the top. And we can spread يعني, da'wah through social media by, by our resilience, by our iman, our faith. By يعني, now the Palestinian issue, it's a Muslim issue. It's not just a, 
Arab issue. You know, they made it seem like it was an issue just in Gaza for Palestinians. Then a Middle Eastern issue. You know, this volatile region. All right, but it's an Islamic issue. Of course. All right, whatever whatever background you are, Chinese, Chinese Somali, Pakistani, Indian, Muslim, provided you're Muslim, you have to feel for your Muslim brother, and you have to spread the awareness, and you have to encourage and educate people as well regarding this. Um, why we yani, should stand up for our brothers, right? This is, uh, you know, Masjid al-Aqsa, he holds the first qibla of the Muslims. The first qibla of the Muslims. In fact, it was the second, second house of Allah. Yeah. The first house of Allah is, as we know, Mecca, right? Inna awwala baytin wadi'ali nasi bi bakata. The first place, uh, the first house of worship was Mecca, right? And then after that, 40 years later, as the scholars, as, as, as the hadith goes, 40 years later, Masjid al-Aqsa was built. Right? And it holds a great importance, and um, we can do da'wah and through means by by bawa ibawa iman and by being ourselves by being Muslims. Mm. Allah Akbar. No, no. Let's uh, let's get one more question from the brothers. Inshallah, Does anyone have a question? That's an excellent. That's question. an excellent yeah. question. Yeah. Subhanallah. So I've seen myself in different opinions, but yeah. we'll ask the question. So. What's the what's the hukum, what's the ruling um, on posting videos of graphic content? We have seen Sheikh say, you know, because of you know the dignity yeah, ru- of the ruins people. honor, yeah, 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 especially the women and stuff like that. Yeah. And feel free to also answer to the best of your yeah. <laughs> 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 I haven't. What type of graphic graphic content? Explosions and stuff. Yeah, blood, like the brothers no, asking no. blood, yeah, like so graphic, you know, graphic, so, so. graphic scenes. Mm, I heard, I have heard some mashayikh say um, this weakens Islam, right? Uh, constantly posting up, uh, you know, the, this is happening and this is happening. And Islam is not weak, right? Even though it looks like the people over there are, are weak and can't do anything, and they are, they're helpless. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by their side. And they're constantly screaming, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is suffice for us. And he's a disposal of affairs. So we don't want to constantly share babies dying, you know, women dying as well. We, we, we want to spread awareness, but at the same time, refrain from graphical, this, this kind of graphic contact. And this is what some of the shaykhs have said as well. Wallahu um, alam, and Allah knows best. Well, we've got two questions from the sisters, because we are running out of time. And they are, they are pretty good questions. Uh, three. With what's going on right now, what is the opinion on people celebrating such as weddings, whatever it may be? I wouldn't say birthdays, but... Celebrating weddings. Yeah, so for example, what is the Islamic viewpoint on people having celebrations during these hard times, etc., such as weddings? People, people celebrating, I mean, you can, you can celebrate as long as... Uh, um, What's happening at the celebration doesn't entail anything that is Islamic, you know, ingredients that are that will make it, you know, uh, make it forbidden or prohibited. Uh, celebration is a celebration, and I think the question is more tied on: is it is it suitable? Is it within is it, these is times, it proper? Yeah. Is it yeah. you know? Is it uh, befitting? Is it behu- you know a befitting for a believer, uh, men and women, to celebrate while this is happening? Well, I would say at the same time, while this is happening, we still need to continue to live our lives. Mm. Um, uh, we should not fall into despondency and despair and lose, lose, our, lose hope. As Muslims, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he uh, is described in the Shama'il Tirmidhi, um, uh, he was always uh, in deep, you know, daim al fikra. He was always in deep thought and concern for the Muslims, concern for the Ummah. He had the biggest responsibility on his back, right? So he was always in this deep concern, and he was he had he had uh, uh, worry and concern for guidance of mankind. That the Quran told him, you know, perhaps you will uh, take yourself to. Uh, you know, destruction because of your grief. The fact that they don't believe push you, it will, will take you towards uh, the, the emotion of that, will take you towards, uh, uh, you know, distraction. But at the same time, you will see that he was always smiling. The point I'm mentioning here, at the same time, you will see he always 
was smiling so we could continue to live and deal with with the emotions so as muslims while this is happening we still need to continue to live and i would say take this opportunity that we should focus our energy on our progress you know as muslims we need to look at what is in our best interest as communities right as communities so we focus our energy um, our passions on what is best for our muslim community right i think that's that's important as young youth we have a lot of opportunity here in melbourne to make a change uh, we have a lot of professionals muslim professionals we have you know those in academia you know uh, we have our fellow um you know brother here we have a lot of resources we have so much that we can do so i think at the same time while this is happening and our hearts feel the pain we need to continue to progress you know on the macro and micro level you know, so coming back to the question as long as the celebration is not haram, it doesn't have anything haram, then it's it's perfectly fine. Yeah. 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 Sheikh Abu Khalil? No, that should be a suffice answer. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, inshallah, inshallah. Beautiful. We'll go into the next question. Can we relate this verse to what is going on right now and interpret it to the situation that is going on with the Palestinian and the Jews? There is two ayat right here, and the first one is, And we warn the children of Israel in the scripture, you will certainly cause corruption in the land twice, and you will become extremely arrogant. And the other ayat, I don't know if you want me to go ayah by ayah. The, the next ayat is, When the first of the two warnings would come to pass, we would send against you some of our servants of great might. We would ravage your homes, this would be a warning fulfilled. Can we relate these verses to what is going on right now in Palestine? Do you want me to pull it up in the actual Quran? Uh, I know the verse. Yeah, it's okay. fine. Uh, I'm not in the position to, to, to comment, um, make tanzil ayat to, to, you know, the verses that are applicable to what's happening right now. Um, my little understanding of this passage in Surah Al Isra, the first page, is that. This has already happened, Bukhti Nasr, when they lost, when they lost um, Mr. Aqsa and the destruction of, the, uh, of, 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 of there, and then they were exiled. Um, so I can't. I will suspend the call, inshallah. Abu Khalil? Same thing. Same, same answer? Yes, I believe that for my Shaykh. Do you want to ask the last question, inshallah, from the sisters? That last one down the bottom. All right, bismillah. So this question is regarding um, Salat al-Ghaib. Um, so are we allowed to attend vigils and memorials for Palestine? So this is maybe a, a kind of the westernized you know, vigils and, and memorials. Um, I misinterpreted it as, as Salat al-Ghaib, but that's, they're asking the question about Memorials and vigils. Are we allowed to attend them for Palestine? So you, it would be. I think it's it's a westernized it's a westernized thing, isn't it? Memorials and vigils. So just kind of standing there and, and remembering. Then I think it would be yeah. recommended. So what is it? What are they showing? Um, like have, you, have you seen them? I haven't no, seen, I, I, I haven't I seen, haven't seen them. Seen I can't. Visualize what exactly yeah. it looks yeah. like. Sure. Khair, inshallah. What, what about what about let's, let's maybe add on yeah, to that. What about Salat al Ghaib? Yeah, Salat al Ghaib, yeah, you know the Jum'ah prayers that they're doing together. You know, what about? Yeah, we can, Salat al Ghaib is permissible. We can perform Salat al Ghaib um, as long as the, as long as the uh, uh, individual has been buried. Mm. Um, keeping in mind that the Shuhada are not, there's no uh, Salat al Janazah upon the Shuhada, right? Um, so, but Salat al-Ghaib is permissible uh, according to Shafi'i Madhab, according to uh, Hanbali Madhab also too, with some, uh, with some explanation, but general Salat al-Ghaib is, is, uh, al is permissible, yeah. Do we have time for one more question from the, from the audience? Yeah, yeah. Khalas, last question, inshallah, for Sheikh Ibrahim from the audience. Anyone have, if anyone has a question? Yeah, bismillah. 
On the what, sorry? Okay. Which rule are which rule are you referring to? <laughs> Muslim rulers. Okay. I mean, you're, talk, you're, you're talking more about the issue of like you know that people say the matkhalis and blah 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 etc stuff so, like that. So the brother's asking what what's the stance? What's the stance on on the Muslim rulers who are not supporting? Who are not? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah, the Muslim rulers who are not supporting um, for the Um Alhamdulillah, this the issue of uh, Palestine has united the Muslim Ummah. Um, the, the Sha'ab, يعني, the people in all these countries. Uh, I don't know which countries you're referring to in particular, but يعني, the answer, it needs a diplomatic answer. So we can't answer that in a short period of time. Right? And uh, there are some, some rulers that can do better. There are some rulers that are better than others. And there are some that, Hadahum Allah, may Allah guide them. يعني, they, they, they need to, يعني, you know, if they're not doing the job, then they need to يعني, remove themselves and give the job to someone that can actually do it. So, subhanAllah, we, we can't even get, forget about يعني, uh, ammunition, forget about uh, one bullet, we can't even get water in Gaza, right? We can't even get food, medicine, oil. So this is something that, uh, it's, it's a musibah, it's a calamity that has befalled the ummah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correct the ummah and correct the rulers. Um, يعني, we can't really call to revolt, revolt against them. We're here in Australia, we'll do our part here in Australia by making dua for them or making dua against them. All right? That's the most that we can do. Um, as for the sha'ab over there, they have to do their part. Wallahu alam. Right, one more question. I think we had one brother. Uh, the brother over there. Yeah. yeah, please. If someone related to this question, what is the obligation on us in a political landscape? How do we represent us? Our duties as individuals? So, okay, so the brother is asking Sheikh Bahdun, what are our duties as individuals to have our views represented? Uh, political advocacy, and that was discussed Sunday night at PGCC by Dr. Yasin Mursi and Brother Gaith. Uh, there was a lot mentioned there, uh, and um, you need the right people to be able to. and. I think there's more important discussion and questions that need to be a uh, answered anyways before that. And uh, they're like, what's the point? Why? What exactly you want to get out of it? Um, and what are you trying to achieve hmm? for your voice to be heard to the federal level or state level? What exactly do you want to uh, uh, get out of it? Uh, Brother Yasin Musi mentioned the other night that at the same time, while you have uh, those who are advocating for the Muslims, we should also focus our energy, as I stated before, on what's best for our Muslim community, and that is building it, uh, building our Muslim community. So we shouldn't neglect that at the same time. Uh, so I'll just give the same similar answer that was mentioned the other night. All right. khair. We do have to wrap up because Aisha uh, Adan has gone, uh, and we'll be making the Adan here as well, inshallah. Jazakumullah uh, khair everyone for coming. Please stick around. There is pizza after Aisha, inshallah. The brothers will be in the cafe and the sisters upstairs. That's right. Yeah, that's the sisters right. will be upstairs, inshallah. The pizza will come to you. So no need to rush. Uh, Jazakumullah khair for, for attending this, this youth mind, this panel. And salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah reward. May Allah reward all the speakers that came, inshallah. So, 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 so,